How are they similar? What do they show? Anybody got an analytical answer? <laughs> Streams in the fall. Streams in the fall? What about over here? I thought something had happened to make those things fall down. I didn't know what it was. If it was like nature or erosion or animals. This is an old growth forest in Southern Illinois. It's in the nature preserve. So something this happened. This is the same thing. Fall on one side. Yeah, it's fall on one side and it's summer on the other. Okay? And I didn't even notice that. The difference is topography. This this is four feet higher than over here. Soil type. This is alluvial soil. This is an upland glacially derived soil. And aspect. Which direction is it pointed? So now that's the exact same, thing. same this, spot? This is, no, this is oh, totally right. different, but it's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. You've got the same phenomena going on. So the, the, the instruction is topography is important when you're doing restoration, and so topography is important. You plant and these trees over here on a restoration, no, it's not going to work. You plant these over here, no, yeah, it's not going to work, right? So having templates like this is, is important. So that's the scientific view. Anybody got a journal entry? Come on, don't be bashful. Everybody got names on your bag badges? I'm going to start calling on names. How about number 25? What did you write? That's you. I can't read. Okay, number 30. <laughs> okay. Um, Trip through Southern Illinois. Loud so everybody can hear. Fall leaves, water running through it, reflections of the sky, they show the beauty of autumn. Okay, you probably didn't hear that. No. no. Read it again. Fall leaves, water running through it, reflections of the sky, they show the beauty of autumn. Okay. Your, your entry didn't exactly capture what was no, there, no. but it was, it's, it's okay. Anybody got one that sort of captured what was going on? Come on. No? Okay, he made the, oh, here's what I wrote in mine. I thought I was on a fall height, but I found unexpected edges, seasonal lines dictated by factors unnoticed until now. Okay, that's what I wrote in my journal. Because you got this, you don't need to describe that, it's already there. Okay, so do it on the next one. These three species tell you something about the habitat and time of year. What? You don't have to know what the species are. Same prairie and express. What 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 habitat is it? Forest floor. Pardon? Forest floor. Sand Forest floor. Sand prairie. Sand prairie. In the spring. In the spring. The morels are out. Sand prairie in the spring. Sand prairie in the spring. 
grave. <laughs> undisturbed, relatively undisturbed sand query in this ring, because this is an ornate box turtle. They don't like disturbance. Okay. And the leaves that are still hanging in from the fall. And the leaves of the fall. The Olympia marble hair, hair Olympia marble uh, butterfly. Butterfly. Here's your butterfly. Mm -hmm. Is a denizen of sand prairies in the spring, and that's only when it lives. You want to see Olympia marbles? You go to Sand Prairie in April and early May. You go over to Sand Ridge, there they are. You go up to Emma, uh, the Lost Mound in the Sand Prairie, there they are. You go over to Kankakee, there they are. They're nowhere else in between, all right? So I wrote, spring on the sand prairie is diverse, beautiful, ornate. Get it? Ornate. Flecked with living ephemeral slabs of marble. Oh. Okay. Be descriptive about something. Anybody else? Did anybody have anything? Yeah. yeah. I got, look how lovely violets of lavender are loved by butterflies and turtles alike. Good. Still doesn't tell you what's going on, but it's descriptive. That's what we want. We want the beginning of description. Okay. What this could have been any, a million things. Does the box turtle eat the violets? What? What do the box turtles eat? Are they box turtle? Yeah. What does it eat? Is it eating the violets or is it eating No. Well, the turtle eat, a box turtle eat anything. It's an omnivore. Okay. It's Probably did. Thank you. Worms, you know, whatever. What was the flower in the on the right? Was uh, that a lavender? Bird's foot violet. Bird's foot violet. Yeah. They were the same flower in the yes, same they were flower. same time, right? No, Just sorry. from different. Okay. What about this one? We got a, we got a river, and we got we got a damselfly. But it's a very special kind of damselfly. It's American ruby spot damselfly. American ruby spot damselfly is like unsilted, rocky bottom. Fast flowing, clear stream. Boy, does that say Illinois? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Except this is Stony Creek over in, over in Vermilion County, and it's a clear, rocky bottom, unsilted. And guess what you find there? Ruby spot damselflies. Okay, this is, you see these, you know, first thing you have to do is notice it. I mean, it's just bright, brilliant red. Looks like a 57 Chevy in a red paint job, you know. So, what would you say about, you may write it right, anybody? Come on, somebody wrote something. Well, I thought it was a dragonfly, so That's I'll, close. I'll tell That's you. Close. You got the right order. <laughs> I knew something was different because of the red. I'm used to the, yeah. the blue. Um, so I wrote that the, I'll just say damsel fly, with its redness and oddity to me, sits languidly on a fresh edible green stalk looking at its summer shadow. The fly is what is the king of the summer, of the late summer river goings on. Good. Summer shadow is a very, very nice image. That's very good. All right, so if this is a denizen of clear, rocky bottom, free, flowing streams, it tells you something about the river, too. Runs, ripples, pools, the palette, crimson gold, creatures, fly over. Water flows unimpeded across the land. This is not an impounded stream. This is not a channelized stream. This is a natural stream. So if you see something like this, you say, oh, yeah. I can see where it helps to put time and location and all that. Absolutely. Stuff. Because if you know that that's the same location and it's there. taken at the same time yes. and you can see the shadows, there you go. then making, you get a lot more. You get a lot more. Answers. And all that stuff goes in your journal, too. Gotcha. Not just this, but you got to go beyond that. Okay. We got location, right? What is all this? What are all these? Well, the birds. And, and what is this? Those are nests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There were like 500 nests. And they're right across the river from East St. Louis, and they're a mix. Rookery. You got black crowned night hares nesting with, with cattle egrets, nesting with great egrets, nesting with, with little little blue egrets. Okay? That's the analytical part. And it's a narrow strip. It's probably what 
100 yards wide and maybe a mile long, right on the edge of a railroad yard across from East St. Louis, in East St. Louis, across from St. Louis. So it's a very, very special place. So what would you write about? What did what anybody write? Um, even when surrounded by a city, the Herons and Egrets find a home. There, she got it, right? They, they have to nest somewhere, right? Anybody else got something? Yeah. Habitat springs out of nature, and yet nature becomes subdued by the manufacturing of habitat. As oh. the birds forage for a place to roost, so the human species clamor for dwelling space. Cool. Here's what I wrote. Raucous, regular, diverse, and aromatic. You <laughs> know, It makes Berkeley exist at the edge of the civilized world. I say right in the middle of it, but for, for all purposes. Okay. Finally. If you live in Illinois, you need to learn this lesson and you need to learn it quickly. <laughs> What's going on here? What's this? They're channelized. Channelized stream. Okay. What? And what does a channelized stream do? It speeds up the water. It flows fast. It has no habitats in it. It flushes. You know, see, this one's levied off. That doesn't help much. It just rises up higher. It just rises up higher. Every, everywhere south of Champaign and Embora, when it rains, it floods. If you don't believe it, follow it. Every city along it has flood walls, and, and you know, all the way down to, to Lawrenceville. And this is the mouth of the Embora when it goes into the Wabash. What is that telling you? That's it's taking a lot of Illinois with it, isn't it? Okay. You can't hide anything. I see why the military loves it. aerial photos. You can't hide anything. Right? You can't hide anything from the air. So for 10 years, this pilot and I, we just flew across Illinois looking for interesting things. You may made what we found. You know? So, here's what I wrote. The whitest cloud rolls ominously into the blue Wabash, Illinois, liquefying and heading downstream. Well, where did it come? Well, it came from East Central Illinois. Where's it going? Well, from Mexico. All right, so this was just an exercise to get you kind of what we're thinking about, you know, where we're going with all these things. Okay.